before we start this video, a large thank you to Dimitri, Christopher, Brandon, Polite Cat, Mexica Strength, Tristan, I Like Toast, 554, and a name I unfortunately can't pronounce. Thank you very much for the support, my friends. I hope you enjoy the video. And a massive thank you to Halo Burner and Ryan Bellin for their incredible support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly and sincerely appreciated, gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy the video. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today, by request of Patreon, we're going to cover the frostbite effect, but also we're going to cover the baseline way that Elden Ring does it. Uh, it's going to go on my enums here and add frostbite, by the way. But we're also going to do it the same way I do it in Nephilim, which is to actually freeze the player and turn them into like a nice statue. So let's go to the player UI manager, and I'm going to duplicate the frostbite bar, or sorry, the bleed bar, and change the name to Frostbite. And I'm gonna set the color to what I feel is a, an appropriate Frostbite color. So I have a blue here, and I'm gonna change the enum on the bar to Frostbite also to reflect that. So honestly, if you wanna pause the video right now and go attempt this, this first bit, what we're gonna do is just set up a new effect, just like we did with Bleed and Poison, make a build up for it, and put all the steps together to make Frostbite work as an effect. So if you want to go do that, pause the video now, I encourage you to do it. Just set everything up the way we did before, but make a brand new effect and see if you can get it to work with the pop-up, the status effect pop-up, the build-up degradation, all that stuff. Now, I'm going to go to take build-up effect. I'm going to add a function for check for frostbite. I'm going to duplicate one of these here. I'll just choose poison because this is going to be a timed effect that it generates and it's more closer to poison than bleed because bleed is just a one-time thing. We're going to say check for frostbite status. And wherever I see the keyword poison here, I'm just gonna change it to frostbite. I'm just realizing I think frostbite is actually one word, not two, but I've already began writing it like this. So we're gonna keep going. I'm probably gonna check that in a minute because now I'm just curious. Poison buildup is equal to, we're gonna change that to frost buildup or frost bite buildup. So we need a degradation effect. Remember that checks if we have any buildup and it just slowly uh, decreases it over time. This is a timed effect and we need to make an actual frostbite effect as well, which is going to be another timed effect. So if the character is over their buildup limit, again, check for frost or frostbite buildup, which we don't have yet because it doesn't exist. So right now Visual Studio is gonna complain. That's okay. And then we're gonna change just again, frostbite buildup to zero instead of being poison buildup. And we are going to say frost bitten effect instead of poisoned effect. So none of this right now exists. So let's go and start writing some stuff so it does exist. First, I'm going to change this from poison to frostbite just one more time. There we go. So the first thing we can do is make the flag for is frost bitten. And we can also make the network variable for build up. So go to your character network manager and copy one of your network variables, so bool specifically and change it to is frost bitten after you paste it again. Okay, so right below there, where did I, apparently I can't see the build up. Here it is, right at the bottom. Copy one of your build ups. I'm gonna copy poison, paste it, change it to frost. And this is working the exact same way before as the previous two right now, currently. So let's go over to the build up degradation effect and we're gonna copy that and paste it, change it to frost, and then change the type from whatever you copied and pasted from my copy bleed actually, change that to frost. And then go to the world effect manager here and we want to actually open this up and create a variable for this, but first I'm gonna add it to my timed effects. Don't forget to add all your new effects to these lists so they get an ID, unless you're manually IDing them, which I would strongly advise against. So let's go over here and copy one of these degrade bleed build up. I'm gonna call this degrade frost build up there we go all right very cool now i'm going to copy and paste my take bleed build up this is an instant effect and i make one for take frost build up so i'm going to do this and also i'm going to put it in my little debug menu in our player effects manager later so we can test it now i'm going to go back to my take build up effect i'm going to comment out the the actual status effect for now because we don't have the script made and I'll save it so Unity stops complaining. And then I'll drag my frost degradation variable into my uh, variable here and into the 
new take frost buildup variable, I will make one by copying one of the other take buildup effects, change the enum to frost, and I'll drag it on in there. So let's go back here, and there we go. All right, very good. So let's go over to timed effects now. I'm just going to click on my poison effect here, and then click on the script related to it, and it will bring me, what if I unlock the inspector? It will bring me to the folder here, and I'm going to create a new script here for our frostbitten effect. So new amount of behavior scripts. I'm going to call this frostbite effect. Now I am going to delete the start and update functionality and drop in my namespace as is per tradition. Okay, I'm going to make this derive from a timed character effect and then I'm going to yoink the create asset menu uh, off another effect after I drop in my override for process and remove. So override process effect and override remove effect. Okay, let's go and open up the poison effect just so we can yoink the create asset menu up here. Now I'll paste that. I'm going to change this from poison effect to frostbite effect. I have to, I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. I got to see if this is one word or two. It is actually two word, or sorry, one word in case you were curious, not two. So I'm way too deep now to go and change all those names. So we're just going to keep it the way it is and I'm going to accept my mistake. So frostbite effect, let's create that. And I am going to set the default length to say 60 and the time remaining is 60. You can set it to wherever you want. I think that's a pretty good time. This is going to cause your stamina to be uh, regenerating very slowly. And I'm going to go back over to my take build effect and uncomment out uh, these two lines. I'm going to change the poison effect variable type to our new frostbite effect. And I'm going to now create a variable for that on our world character effects manager. So under status effects, public frostbite effect, frostbite effect. Let's save. Okay, looks good. Now let's go over to our prefab and drag in the new effect. And don't forget to add it to your timed effects as well after you drag in as a variable. So it generates an ID. That way we can check for it by ID. Now let's go over to the player UI pop-up manager and wherever I put it, here we go, send status effect pop-up. You can see here we're sending one using an enum of type and we're using this UI status effect warnings. Let's go find that. Let's find that and add in our new frost. So if I click on this, there's a switch statement here. We're going to create a new one for a case going to be buildup.frost. So I'm going to change blood loss color to frost color. And down here, I'm actually going to change warning text color to frost color. And I'm going to change the text. I'm actually going to spell it correctly here because the player will see this as a pop up. So my variables can remain uh, improperly spelt but I will put frostbite here as a singular word because this will be seen by the players. Now I will save this and then I am going to go over to my status effect warning. It's funny because I say this as if I'm ever going to release this video, this uh, project and anybody but you guys are going to see it. I'm going to change the frostbite color here to blue and then I'm going to go over to the character network manager here and I'm going to copy any of our functions here. So I have on poison change. I'm going to change on eased frost bite or frost bitten changed and you can comment this out or delete it if you want um, but generally you're going to make some kind of effect here we're going to do it a little bit differently when i actually freeze the character but you know what for now just uh just actually so that it's working let's actually go ahead and keep this and we'll just make a really simple particle effect but i'm also going to show you what i would do to actually um, encapsulate or cover the character in ice but to keep it very simple now to make sure it works, I'm just going to make a game object frostbite and then we can instantiate it and we can call it frostbite VFX from a world character effects manager. I'm basically just going to duplicate the really terrible poison particle I made and change the color to blue just so we know it's working. And we can do the same thing. We can store a local uh, variable for the effects on the character effects manager. So if it already exists, you don't want to instantiate it twice. Um, so let's just go ahead and go over here now and copy and paste the poison VFX. I'm going to say hide an inspector because I don't need to see this. Uh, it's just going to be public so we can reference it for another script, but I don't need to see uh, its property itself in the inspector. 
So under header VFX, under the world character effects manager, I'm going to create frostbite VFX and we can drag that in, in a moment. Oh, over here, they should stop complaining. It's just taking its time. Yes, cool, good to go. Player network manager. Let's go over here and I'm going to close or minimize all these functions. I'm gonna create an override for this. And I'm just gonna do the same thing I've done for my other status effects. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna obviously perform the base logic but also we're going to send the player a pop-up uh, based on the status effect, which in this case is frost. So let's find the code and yoink it. Don't need all this, this is poison. We're doing more stuff here because we're changing our uh, our bar color and our HP bar. We just need the pop-up because we're not changing it for frost. You could uh, change the stamina bar though to like a, a cold blue if you're frostbitten, just an idea. You could use the same logic, be a cool learning experience. But we're going to check for if is owner, and we're going to send that pop-up on the player UI manager, send status effect pop-up, and we're going to pass frost. Okay, very good. Now let's go over to the player manager. Cool. And we're going to call this stuff here on our on network spawn. So this one needs to be called for your game object in your game and your game object in other people's game because it's going to generate that particle effect. So call it regardless if you are the owner or not. And don't forget to unsubscribe from it when your network object is despawned, like so. So we're gonna do minus equals. All right, now let's go over to our AI character manager. Let's go in here. And I'm not sure if I brought this up before, but someone asked me, why do you uh, not use these on the base class of character manager? And I think I'm gonna answer this in the last video, but in case I didn't, the answer is quite simply because I was copying this from Nephilim mostly without thinking too much, and I realized that I have a special case where some characters I don't want to inherit all of the same um, effects and status effects, so I put them on separate classes, but you don't need to do that. You can put them on one shared class if you want. Now, player effects manager, let's go over there and let's add our debug delete later. Uh, let's do apply frostbite, and then we're just gonna do the same thing. So this is obviously not gonna stay in the game, but this is just so we can test it quickly in the inspector. We're going to say if apply frostbite, apply frostbite equals false. Then we're going to instantiate a take frostbite buildup effect and we're going to process it on the character via the character effects manager. And that is how we are going to make sure this is not broken. So take frost buildup effect. Save. And let's go in the game here. And I have certainly forgotten something. Yes, I did. I forgot multiple things. Okay, let's go see what I forgot. So. First off, uh, let's go to add buildups in the character effects manager. I did not add a uh, check for the frost. I only have bleed and poison. So let's duplicate this. And again, we have a note here uh, for adding resistances. I'm gonna do case buildup frost, change the keyword bleed to frost, and then we're going to affect our frost buildup. All right, cool, that is step one. We never actually also plugged in our buildup bar there's no way to use it right now. So let's first go back here though and change poison build up the name to frost build up. Let's make sure we're not toggling is poisoned for our character. Let's change that to is frost bitten. Let's save that and then let's go back into the game again. And if I click this, yes, there is no build up. So before I go and do the build up bar, let's duplicate my horrible looking poison particle effect and I'm gonna change it to a blue. And then I'm gonna make it into a prefab and we're going to put that in our world character effects manager so we don't get an error when we become frostbitten. Okay, so dragging that in there like so. Gonna go to the world character effects manager. There we go. I probably should have zeroed out the position on that, but that's okay, this is a temporary effect. I'm gonna do it anyway. Right click, reset, transform. Let's go over to the player UI HUD manager and we're going to do set max buildup value. So let's create a variable for a bar that doesn't exist and set the max step. We want to say frostbite buildup bar, which doesn't exist yet, at least on the variable, dot set max stat, and we pass our buildup capacity. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it like so. And now let's go make that variable really fast, and then we can drag it in. So serializable field, UI buildup bar, and we're gonna say frostbite buildup bar. Very good. Copy this set new bleed amount and paste it to and change it to set new frostbite amount. And instead of referencing the bleed buildup bar, let's reference the frostbite buildup bar. Now we can actually find where this is being called by right clicking on the one that already exists. Let's copy the name of this new one first. 
find all references, and then we can paste it right below where we find it. So we can see here, referencing the player network manager dot bleep build up. Let's instead reference the frostbite build up. We're going to say on value change plus equals player UI manager dot instance dot player UI HUD manager. And instead of referencing the set new bleep build up, we reference the set new frostbite build up. Okay, now we can copy that, go to our second reference and paste it and then unsubscribe by doing minus equals. I think we're good. Let's just see. Let's go down and drag this in here now, the variable. Let's save our prefab or player UI. And if I go in game and click it, no, we're actually still, no, we're good. But we did forget to, or rather I forgot to degrade the build up. So let's do that as well. So you can see the build up does not change. Go to your character stats manager, and then we have a function for degrading our buildups. And again, we didn't have a case for our new effect, which is our frost. So let's paste this down here. Honestly, this function could also go on your character effects manager. It kind of depends on where you think it should go more. Uh, so we're going to say frost buildup minus equals, and then we're going to say frost buildup. Uh, the effect time remaining is equal to your frost buildup. So apply frost buildup. You can see, yes, it is in fact going down. Cool. Apply it again. Yep. Okay. Going down and boom. Frostbite. All right, so if we go to the frostbite effect now, let's think about what we want to do. So, one, we want to create an additional effect or place the functionality here that will, for a time, so this will be a timed effect, slow the player's stamina regeneration. So I say optionally create an additional time effect because if you do you can reuse this time effect for other things so if you ever want to you know slow the player's stamina regeneration from some other means you can also just reuse that effect if you don't think you're ever going to reuse it again you can simply create it here two optionally we can set the player's stamina or characters uh, to zero when they become afflicted by frostbite initially so not only does your stamina generate slower it's zero three as a bonus we can freeze the player or character for a short time. So I'm gonna cover all of this, uh, but I really encourage you. So we're gonna stop the video right now actually, because we're almost approaching 20 minutes here, I believe. And this is a great time for anybody who wants to, to go ahead and try to do these things on your own. So what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna, again, slow the stamina regeneration for our time. So it's gonna be a timed effect. We need to create a modifier to affect how fast our stamina increments up or down. And then optionally set your stamina to zero and then freeze the player for a time. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. And as always, I hope you have a very lovely weekend. A special thank you and shout out to my patrons. It is because of all of you, this series may continue. A shout out to the lovely people who share the series via word of mouth, who take the time to like the videos and comment. It helps the algorithm out greatly. I will see you guys next week where we'll learn how to reduce our stamina regeneration, freeze our character in place, and maybe we'll also throw in some damage on that effect as well to apply a small amount of damage when frostbite is inflicted.